this is my post-fight review for the fight between uh, Nanit Odenir and Toshiaki Nishioka last weekend. Um, like I said, I was going to do a second video, but I just haven't had time. Um, if you recall, I did the first video on the Crazy Fanboy Edition. So, um, m fantastic win for Nanit Odenir. I thought he pretty much won every single round. I'd be surprised if... Um, if I'd given any to Nishioka, I wasn't really scoring, but uh, it looked like Denier had control over the entire fight. Um, so therefore, massive win for him, because Nishioka, going into the fight, I had him rated at about ninth or 10th in the world. I mean, that's how good he is. Uh, he's, you know, one of the best super bantamweights and bantamweights in the world. Um, so massive win for Nanito Dene. I thought the stoppage itself was a bit poor, really. I mean, uh, I discussed this with a few friends online, and we all agreed that Nishioka was pretty much doing the best work that he'd done for the entire fight um, in that ninth round, and he got caught with a big right hook from, or a bit big right um, straight right from Nanito Dene, and went down. It was the second knockdown of the fight, but both were from really precise punches from Nanito Dene. Um, speed and precision, um, more so than power, really. And uh, he hit the, hit the canvas. And as soon as he got up and said, you know, I'm alright, he threw one more punch and then the referee st stepped in. And his corner jumped in as well. Um, but I didn't think that um, he should have stopped it there. I mean, Nishioka's face wasn't all battered up and everything. And most of the punches that Nanita Denier had landed throughout the fight were jabs. Most of the fights he landed throughout the fight were jabs. Some of them were um, hooks and rights, uh, straight rights and things like that. But none of them were really power punches. Um, Nishioka's face wasn't bludgeoned at the end. He didn't have two black eyes. It did not look like Manny Pacquiao's battering of Antonio Margarito or Oscar De La Hoya or Ricky Hatton. Did not look like that. So I thought that um, Nishioka should have been allowed to continue. And... Would Nanita Denier have got a late stoppage? Possibly so. He certainly would have won a wide unanimous decision. But in any um, important fight like this, I think the opponent should be given the chance to continue. Unless he has literally been battered over the entire distance, which Nishioka was not. Um, massive win for Nanita Denier though, because of how good Nishioka is, um, or was, because it looks like he's now retired. Uh, I couldn't find any... Um, any complete concrete evidence that he'd retired but I know that it was rumoured before and after the fight and I've seen some articles saying uh, Ni uh, Nishioka is likely to retire but I haven't read anything which says I'm going to retire straight out of Nishioka's mouth and if he has retired then he retires a legend and I think his name should be discussed for a place in the Hall of Fame um, that is something which I'll probably discuss with the guys on BoxingBB.com and RingNews24BoxingForum.com but we don't always agree on who should be inducted and who shouldn't. So that would definitely be one up for debate. Um, so Nanita Denier, big win for him. Uh, wide unanimous decision over Nishioka is very rare. Who does he fight next? Um, on Boxing BB this week, we've been discussing whether he's been ducking Guillermo Rigondeau. Um, I'm not sure whether he's been ducking him because I do think Nanita Denier has beaten a whole host of great fighters. Um, but I do think that Rigondeau is probably the best super bantamweight out there. And to all of those people who say, oh, he hasn't fought anyone, doesn't matter if he hasn't fought anyone. Sometimes when you've got Three to four hundred amateur fights under your belt. You don't need to fight that many pro fights. He's already passed 30. He's already beaten. You know, he's already had three or four hundred amateur fights. He's already rated as one of the best um, amateur fighters of all time. And guys like Mark Breland. He was a um, one of the best amateur fighters of all time. Um, you know... And then he moved up to um, pro level where he also had a successful pro career. So anyway, you don't have to have 30 pro fights in order to prove how good you are after you've had that many amateur fights. And I think that Rigondeau is the pe best fighter at the weight. There's also um, Adnan Mares, 
There's also at Bantamweight, there's an Anselmo Moreno, who I know is rated as one of the most avoided fighters out there and one of the most underrated fighters out there. Uh, who else is there? Um, I'm trying to think who else there is now at Super Bantamweight. But anyway, there's. I think that the three biggest fights for Nanita Donaire at the weight now are Adnamares, Rigondo, and if Anselmo Moreno moves up, there's him. Um, I think there's some other fighters, but right now I can't think of them all. So um, those are the sort of fights that Nanita Donaire should be fighting next. And I've read that he said that if he can't get the fights at Super Bantamweight, he's going to move up to Featherweight. But... I think he can do featherweight because of his height and all that. I don't think he's a small super bantamweight. But, I mean, that to me just smells of I'm not going to fight Rigondo, which is why on Boxing BB this week we were discussing whether um, he's ducking him. And if that fight doesn't get made, or if it um, is allowed to linger on for too long, I can see the same thing happening that happened with uh, Juan Malopez and um, Yoriel Kis Gamboa, where they were, where the fight was um, lingered on for so long, and Bob Arum said that he was building the fight up, and then in the end, Juan Manuel Lopez lost twice to Orlando Salido, and now the fight is dead in the water. So I hope it doesn't linger on. I hope they just fight because that's the fight everyone wants to see. If not, at Namares. but the Rigondo fight has to happen. Um, and if it does, I'll be picking Rigondo because I think he is the total package. Um, and if that fight doesn't happen, I'd like to see Rigondeau fight Abnamares or um, Anselmo Moreno, something like that. So, uh, exciting times at Super Bantamweight.